In this video, I'm going to give you almost 50 different affordable sources of vital protein way beyond meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. With the price of meat skyrocketing, many of us are looking for alternate sources of the vital macronutrient protein. Most of the sources I'm going to show you in this video, they can actually be stored in the pantry with no electricity. I'll also show you three recipes, which I'll add in the description section below, along with showing you how to cook these protein packed meals. So you're definitely going to want to watch this one all the way through. Beans. All plants contain protein, and here I'm going to list some of the big ones. If the food has more protein in it than the equivalent 3 ounces of steak, more than 21 grams per 3 ounces, I'll put an asterisk next to it. Beans are often viewed as a primary protein source, and they're loaded with protein as we'll see. They're not a complete protein though, so they shouldn't be the only source of protein on your menu. When it comes to beans, 3 ounces of pinto beans have 23.4 grams of protein, kidney beans have 20 grams, azuki beans have 17 grams, black beans have 6 grams, lima beans have 6.5 grams, and great northern beans have 7.2 grams of protein. Legumes Both peas and beans are legumes. There are about 16,000 types of beans and legumes grown all over the world in different sizes, shapes, colors, and textures. When it comes to legumes, 3 ounces of Lupini beans have 31 grams of protein, soybeans have 31 grams, lentils have 22 grams, peanuts have 22 grams, chickpeas have 16.3 grams, green peas have 5 grams, and lima beans have 6.5 grams of protein. Tabbouleh Recipe Tabbouleh salad or tabbouleh is a simple Mediterranean salad of very fine chopped vegetables, lots of fresh parsley, mint, and bulgur wheat, all tossed with lemon juice and olive oil. There are thousands of variations, and while I don't use bulgur wheat, I use amaranth and quinoa to make it a healthier, protein-packed, gluten-free salad. Add 3 ounces of quinoa and amaranth, adding the juice of a half lemon. Top off with enough boiling water to just cover the grains. This will soften them. Chop a handful or so of mint. Chop one or two bunches of parsley. Slice diagonally, then de-seed and finally cube a cucumber. Cube one large tomato. Some people de-seed them, but I don't bother. I can't tell the difference in a salad. Chop at least two scallions more if you like a little more bite to the salad. I'll also add about a dozen chopped black olives. Returning to my amaranth and quinoa, it has absorbed almost all of the liquid cooked and softened up a bit. To this, I'm going to add one cup of extra virgin olive oil, then the juice of the other half of the lemon and one more. You can pass on the second lemon if you don't like it too lemony. I find that the lemon absorbs right in and incorporates pretty well. To this, you will add all your chopped vegetables, then mix until all ingredients are fully incorporated and mixed. You're going to want to refrigerate this overnight to let the flavors come together and to let the grains continue to soften. Serve chilled with crackers or pita bread and enjoy. The whole salad has about 26 grams of plant protein in it. You could throw in some lapini beans and give it an even bigger protein kick. There's not too many rules with tabbouleh. Nuts. Here are some tree nuts with their protein equivalents per 3 ounces. Black walnuts have 20.4 grams of protein, almonds have 18.1 grams, pistachios have 17.4 grams, walnuts have 13 grams, hazelnuts have 12.9 grams, brazil nuts have 12 grams, hickory nuts have 10.8 grams, pine nuts have 9.9 grams, pili nuts have 9 grams, and acorns have 6.9 grams of protein. Seeds. Seeds like nuts get touted as a protein powerhouse, and they are, with at least one ranking higher than a 3 ounce steak. Here they are. Hemp hearts have 26.4 grams of protein. Pumpkin seeds have 19.8 grams. Sunflower seeds have 17.4 grams. Flax seeds have 15.6 grams. Sesame seeds have 15 grams. Chia seeds have 14.1 grams. And buckwheat has 11.4 grams. Chili Recipe I purposely picked recipes that have unlimited variations. Chili, it fits that bill. This is a protein and fiber powerhouse that you can flavor and spice it up as you like. I'm going to go light on the spice with this version. Chop and saute one large onion, three garlic cloves, and maybe a hot pepper and a tablespoon of olive oil or the fat of your choice. To this, add a few tablespoons of tomato paste and stir. Add a little water if needed to keep the contents from sticking. To this, I'm going to add 3 ounces each of black beans, lima beans, white beans, lentils, and pinto beans. Stir those in until all ingredients are well incorporated. As that cooks, I'll add 2 large pinches of sea salt. After a few minutes, I'll add 24 ounces of chicken stock and 16 ounces of water. Finally, I'll add 2 tablespoons of taco mixed chili powder and 1 fourth tablespoon of cumin as my seasonings. 
On a stovetop or fire, you will bring this to a boil, cover, and then lower it to simmer for a few hours until the beans are soft, adding water as needed. In my pressure cooker, I just set it on high for 30 minutes and that's it. This makes about two to three quarts of chili that has about 66 grams of protein, but I wouldn't suggest you try and eat all that chili in just one sitting. Pseudo cereals and grains. Some pseudo cereals and grains have high levels of oxalates in them and should be cooked, but the cooking process also denatures the protein and destroys some of the amino acids. When it comes to three ounces, whole oats have 14.4 grams of protein, teff has 12 grams, spelt has 12 grams, amaranth has 11.4 grams, quinoa has 10.8 grams, Millet has 10 grams, and wheat flour has 9 grams of protein. Oatmeal Cookies This is my favorite oatmeal cookie recipe. Cream together 3 fourths cups softened or melted butter with 1 cup brown sugar and a half cup of white sugar. Add 4 teaspoons vanilla and continue to mix until it's all incorporated. Add 2 eggs and stir. When it's all incorporated, add 1 teaspoon baking powder, 1 fourth teaspoon of baking soda, and 1 and 3 fourths cups all-purpose flour, and 1 fourth teaspoon of salt. Mix until well incorporated. To this, I'm going to add an ounce and a half each of flax seeds and sesame seeds and one ounce of chia seeds. But to make the protein in those hard seeds more bioavailable, I'm going to pulse them in the blender. Mix until incorporated. I'm also going to add three ounces of shaved almonds. Finally, add two cups whole oats and mix until all ingredients are incorporated. Roll these into one and a half inch balls on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet and allow an inch or two between the cookies. Cook for 12 to 15 minutes in a 375 degree oven or 190 Celsius oven. Place on a wire rack to cool. These will make roughly two dozen cookies. The entire batch I estimate to have about 114 grams of protein, which is 4.75 grams per cookie. Mushrooms and vegetables. There's a lot of foods that contain protein in small amounts, and I'm gonna add mushrooms and vegetables here, though they don't contain a lot per ounce. Oyster mushrooms have 2.7 grams of protein, Broccoli has 2.4 grams, spinach has 2.4 grams, shiitake has 1.8 grams, and morels have 1.8 grams of protein. If you want to stay in touch with the carnivore side of yourself and are desperate for an abundant and replenishable protein source, there's a final category that I'm going to include here that many will find unappealing, but it is a source. Bugs and worms. Most will find this unappealing, but it's worth mentioning so you know. Here's what 3 ounces of insects equates to as a protein source. Crickets have a whopping 48 grams of protein. Worms have 20 grams, beetles have 19 grams, ants have 12 grams, and mealworms have 17 grams of protein. I'm not going to include any recipes for this, but again, I just wanted to bring this up so you know. When it comes to protein, your body can't function properly for very long without it. While most organic matter that we consume has protein in some small amounts, the quantity and our body's ability to process and assimilate it can vary widely. The winners here for your pantry are pinto beans, most of your legumes, lentils, lupini beans, peanuts, and soybeans. Finally, a winner is hemp hearts because they actually have more protein than three ounces of steak, believe it or not. Many of your vegan powdered protein mixes are hemp heart and soybean based. Other winners are sunflower, amaranth, and buckwheat because they are complete proteins in that they contain those nine essential amino acids. Plus, you can easily grow them. Most tree nuts also make my list if they grow in your area. They don't have as much protein, but they store and transport well. Any of these sources of protein that can be easily dried and stored is really reason enough to get a wide array of them in your food inventory. All of them provide minerals, enzymes, and vitamins that make them great sources of nutrition beyond just being a protein source. Don't just stockpile food in your prepping food supplies. Make sure that you have the right nutrition to get you through any disaster. At the very least, make sure that you have a protein powder that you can use and rotate out so that you're always getting your minimum daily needs. A final warning though is that too much of anything can be bad. The same is true with protein. You are better off getting a wide array of protein sources in varied quantities than you are blasting your body with a mega dose of protein. I've heard of some athletes who have had too much protein, more than two grams per kilogram of body weight per day. The result of that intake can have a horrible impact on the body, putting a metabolic burden on the bones, the kidneys, and the liver. Make protein a part of the meal, not the whole meal, and get what your body needs from multiple sources. Hopefully this gave you enough information to help you determine how to put together complete protein sources that you don't have to refrigerate. You can actually store in a pantry for just everyday living or for emergency. If you have any feedback, any thoughts or any questions, feel free to post those in the comments section below. And as always, stay safe out there.